We have taken some major scalps in the past few games. The January transfer window is now open. It's been a little bit quieter than I thought it was going to be. We had three rough games in a row after that Sampdoria game. The first of which was a fantastic one all draw away from home against Roma, which arguably we probably should have won. Eden Jack all put them in front 56 minutes in, but Mattia Destro equalised with nine minutes remaining, and we got a crucial away point. And would you look at this? Genoa won. Juventus nil. Now we did not deserve this one, but they couldn't find the breakthrough. Eldard put us in front 33 minutes in and we got three points against Juve. Absolutely unbelievable. And the good run of form continued with a one all away draw against AC Milan. Again, pretty undeserved, but we were seconds away from getting the win as Azic had put us in front in the 20th minute. They equalised in the 94th minute. Jens Petterhaus got them the goal and... It's still a weird point against Milan's unbelievable. We then went back to normal, this time against Inter Milan in the Italian Cup. But again, looking at their match stats, we arguably should have at least got a draw out of this one. But Alexis Sanchez was on fire, got himself a hat-trick. Martinez with one. Matteo Destro from the penalty spot for us. We just couldn't find a way through their defence. And I was a little bit disappointed with this one. A 2-0 home defeat against Fiorentina. They were just super clinical in the last 10 minutes. It was 0-0 going the 84th minute when they got two. And... Uh, Disappointing result, but with the other results mixed in there, I think we've had a fantastic run of form. And that sees the Serie A table looking like this. We currently sit in 14th position on 17 points. Only three points clear from the drop zone, but we've had a rough run of games. So I think we can be excused of that. And the next two should be more winnable. The next one coming up is Benevento. And then who else do we have? We have Verona, both away from home. But I think two winnable games. Verona performing pretty well. But um, I'm hoping we can get at least three points, hopefully four, maybe six. As I mentioned, the transfer window is open. It hasn't quite went as well as I thought it would. We just, there's just not the players, to be quite honest with you. We've only brought in one player, and that is Nicolo Armini. We've brought him in from Lazio for £95,000. His contract was run up at the end of the year, and they only wanted the 90k to bring him in now. And I've been playing him, to be honest. As you can see, he's made three starts in Syria. He's an Italian at 19 years old with two and a half star current, five star potential. Why wouldn't I? If I think we're going to stop up comfortably, which I think we are going to do, I might as well chuck in the youngsters to get them developed and see how I see them fitting into the squad next season. But I'm hoping he might be a fixture with the five star potential. I'm hoping with the regular game time, he will shoot up. In terms of other moves that I'm eyeing up, this fella I would like to bring in for next season. I can't get him now. He's on loan at Sal Salernitana. Um, from Lazio again but for the 2.4 to 5 million I'm more than happy to scrape that together maybe 4 million all in he's he's says he's Brazilian but he's got part uh, Italian nationality which is one of the reasons why I'm majorly interested he can play in both the attacker midfielder and the central midfield roles attacker midfield will probably be the role for me he's got the potential as well to grow I think I think he's going to be a sign in make. we've had him before as we have this fella I want him back I want Seb back. Esposito, he's on loan at Spal from Inter Milan. Uh, the scout report reckons between 11 and 23, so you're probably looking at about £17 million to bring this fella in. And if we can somehow manage to get the money together, <laughs> of course I'm going to do it. Signing young Italians is absolutely ideal for what we want to achieve with Genoa. But the reason why that's probably a pipe dream, next season our estimated transfer budget is going to be two million quid. So uh, it's going to take a lot of wheeling and dealing to bring any of that through. In terms of outs, we haven't sold anybody either, I don't think. Oh, we've sold this guy, 51k. He'd agreed a deal. Thought we might as well sell him now if he's willing. And um, yeah, January transfer window being a slight disappointment. So this is going to be the lineup for the first game against Benevento. We've actually had to drop Eldor from the striker position and put Goran Pendev in. He's just struggling for fitness and it's definitely affecting his performances. So we're going to drop him for now. Mattia Perrin, Barashi and Armini in the centre halves. Sapa Costa, Bedell, Pellegrini, Gerard Romelagioni, Zazic, Destro and Goran Pendev. Benevento are sitting bottom of the league. I fully expect three points from this game. It just depends how we seem to be performing better against teams we shouldn't be beating. So let's see how our, how our form gets against a team we should be. First highlight of the game, six minutes in, it's Falk with a corner for them. It, oh, it somehow gets into the back of the net. I think it comes off our defender, Kamil Glick is the man who is credited with the goal, but that is hugely disappointing. As we can see here, the ball's whipped in, he gets his head on it, who's that? Zappa Costa, Jesus Christ. 
So we need to get ourselves back into this and quickly, hopefully. Benevento on the ball eight minutes in. Hopefully we can pinch this ball and counter. But they're playing it about quite nicely, to be quite honest with you. Ball's over the top. Caprari's in behind. Oh, Gianluca Caprari can't get it on target. Oh, big kick up by the goalkeeper. It's brought down by Insigne. And to be honest with you, Benevento are all over us. We're going to go off attack and go to balanced. Um, see if our boys can wake up a little bit. Highlight for us, hopefully. Pellegrini gets the ball back after he's dreadful throwing Bedell. Out of Pellegrini. We know he's got the crossing capabilities. Oh, Destro can't quite get there. Sturaro keeps the ball alive. Zappa Costa back to Sturaro. We've got the space on the left-hand side if you want to switch it, but I don't think he does. Zappa Costa gets past his man, finds Matai Destro, and that is the equaliser. I don't think there's a question of offside there. Benevento 1, Genoa 1, more of the same plays. And after a pretty electric first start of the game, the first 20 minutes or so, the rest of the second day of the first half just goes by without a whimper. So I'll tell the boys I'm not happy. Kick off of the second half. I'm not feeling three points out of this game now. Well, second half's going well. I'm going back to attacking for the final 15. We'll look to make some subs. Who's, who's performing terribly? We've got Luca Pellegrini. He's coming, going to come off for Sisbora. Zazic is just terrible. I would really like to replace him. We're going to bring on Piaka in behind the striker. And we'll bring on Larega in centre midfield for Sturaro. Ten minutes to go. Can our substitutes make an impact? And we have our first highlight of the second half. 82 minutes in. Big kick up by Perry and Goran Pendev. He's got knee pace, but he's got the finishing capabilities of an absolute monster. His third goal of the season. 82 minutes gone. We go 2-1 up. It was just a hoof ball. Big ball over the top. How Pandev beats the offside trap, I have no idea. But the defence must be just as slow as he is. Glick he is pretty slow, to be fair. And that is a sumptuous, sumptuous finish. Well, it looks like we're going to scrape through this one. Benevento 1, Genoa 2. A little undeserved, honestly, but we will absolutely take it. Three points is three points. Verona's up next. We're still in 14th. We've got some catching up to do with uh, the mid-table clubs, I think. So it's likely we're going to be in and around the bottom 14, but I'm happy with that. So I'm hoping we'll get this deal over the line, ready for the end of the season. Matteo Perrin is currently our starting goalkeeper. He's on loan from Juventus. We don't have an agreed fee with him. And to be honest with you, Sport Yellow on a free transfer, 28 years old, will be absolutely fantastic. Matteo Perrin is the same age. And if you have a look, it's very, very close as to who's the better goalkeeper. Matteo Perrin in the blue. It's If we get him on a free transfer, it means we don't have to spend five, six, seven, eight million pounds on a goalkeeper next season. So I'm thinking this is a deal that I'm going to have to do. The heroics from Goran Pendov last game means he's injured for this one, of course he is. But Eldor does return. He just needed a little bit of a rest for match fitness. Uh, other than that, I think everything's pretty much the same. Armenian in the defence, Melodjoni in the midfield. Them are the two key players that I want to keep giving game time to, even though it's clearly not doing Melodjoni much good. Um, but Armenia as well. We need to give our young boys the match time. So here we go. Away from home against Verona. They're currently sitting ninth. Uh, I think it's ninth. There are about four points clear from us. So if we win this, we do close the gap massively between ourselves and the top half. First highlight of the game comes two minutes in down this left-hand side with Luca Pellegrini. One of the major issues for next season is that left wing-back spot when he returns to Juventus. But uh, Verona do manage to get a clear. Can we win this header? Armini oh, does well. Finds Melagioni. Zabacosta drives down this right-hand side. He finds Mattia Destro in the box. Melagioni. Destro. What a finish, Mattia Destro. He has not been great this season. Well, that is his fifth goal of the season. He's starting to form a little bit of a partnership up top with Eldor. And uh, if he can keep scoring like that, even though he's not very good, I'm more than happy with it. That is a great finish. Him combining with Melagioni. Top bins. No chance for the keeper. Oh, Luca Pellegrini picks up an injury pretty early. We'll bring on Lennart Sisbora, who might end up being our starting left wing work next season. Ten minutes in, we have ourselves another highlight. We are playing it about... Between the defence and the midfield. And Sisbora can... Oh, I thought he was going to lose it. Eldor's played through by Destro. What a save. Who is that goalkeeper? Silvestri. Absolute phenomenal save. They're playing a very, very similar system to us. Just dropping one of the strikers for an attacker midfielder. Um, which I think is proven pretty nicely for us. Uh, we're keeping the, the lion's share of possession. We're limited in our opportunities. But uh, they're starting to come into the game more and more. Highlight now. Zajic with the free kick. Plays it in. Eldor... Can't get to it. Zappa Costa wins the ball after Verona get it clear. Can he get past his man? Or at least whip it in. He can. Destro's there. Silvestri with a comfortable save. Oh, that wasn't even the highlight. This is Benassi. 
long balls over the top or our kryptonite, but I'm I'm not going to drop our line. We have ourselves a free kick. Zajic steps over and he takes it. Oh, Silvestri, what a save. We should be 3-0 up. Absolute heroics. He's on a 7.1. Get lost. I know goalkeeper ratings are slightly fixed uh, for this year's FM, but he should be on a 9. We are going to come off attacking and go to balanced just to settle things down a little bit, hoping that we can keep Verona out for the rest of this game. We're not dominating this game at all. Um, so we'll see how this goes. 22 minutes left. Free kicks played in. Eldor's back post, but Rashi's there. He's offside. The assistant is flagged. VAR's going to check it, I am assuming, but it's unlikely. And VAR checking goal review, and he is disallowed. Time is ticking away. Verona haven't really offered anything in this second half. We'll look to rest some boys. Zapacosta can come off for Giglione. Zajic can come off. We'll bring on Piaka. I like him in behind. And then we'll uh, confirm them subs. Three minutes remain, and time is ticking away. Verona offered nothing this second half. And we're going to get away with back-to-back -back wins. Not back-to-back -back good performances, though, but back-to-back -back wins. Six points on the table. We're still sitting 14th. We're that far behind. All these wins are just closing the gaps. And uh, we're now only four points off 10th place for Verona there. And I'm thrilled. Oh, Pellegrini is out for five weeks. Not ideal at all. But uh, I'm more... A Sisbora, he's, tw he's a 21-year-old German. And he looks okay, not fantastic, but he does have a lot of potential. So he's likely to be our starter next season. So he's going to get a lot of game time now with Luca Pellegrini out. Looking forward to the next episode then, boys. When we're going to come back, I'd really like to avoid Inter Milan if all possible. So Spezzi and Sassuolo, I think there's going to be next two winnable games there. Well, they might be winnable. Sassuolo sitting in fifth, maybe not so. But we'll come back for them and we'll see how we get on. And of course, if I do manage to get anything done during this January transfer period, I will let you know in the next episode. But anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.